What are you expecting God to do in this church? Amen. Well, we're going to look at that and some other things tonight. If you would, please open your Bibles to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. As we continue expositorily through the book of Luke, here in Luke chapter 7. And we'll begin reading in verse 1. Luke chapter 7 and verse 1. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say to one, go, and he goeth, to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask his blessing on the message. Brother Chuck, would you pray for us, please? Father, I pray that Jesus Christ would have liberty. I pray you give our pastor unction and power to God. the word of God with authority and boldness. I pray that he wouldn't say anything he shouldn't say. I pray that he would say everything that you would want him to say, Father. And I just pray, Father, that every one of us now would evaluate our hearts. Uh, we confess sin. We clean ourselves out, Lord God, for the preaching of the word of God. And we just love you and thank you for mercy, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Now, uh, as we go through this uh, set of verses right here, we see this Roman centurion. And obviously, he's pretty high up in rank. He's got himself some servants, got himself soldiers that are underneath of him. And obviously, this centurion, this Roman soldier, is a decent man. What we would consider a good man. Uh, he cared about his servant. When he heard that his servant was at the point of death, he cared. He didn't just say, well, I'll get another one. No big deal. No, he cared. This fellow cared. He cared about his soldiers. He knew, who, he knew how to give orders and he knew how to obey orders. He was loyal. He's loyal to his country, loyal to his fellow soldiers. Obviously, he was a humble, humble fellow. I mean, he had some virtue to him, no doubt about that. He told Jesus or had his servants tell him, hey, I'm not worthy. Humble, humble man. Uh, we see this is a, a good citizen, a moral man, no doubt about it. And thank God, listen, when it came push to shove, he knew who to go to. Amen. He said, you, I heard about that Jesus. You go find Jesus. Amen. Uh, you get him to, to, to help in this situation. But listen, being a good citizen and being a virtuous man and being a good neighbor and being a good soldier and all of that stuff is not in this passage what impressed the Lord Jesus Christ. What was it that just really impressed Jesus Christ about this centurion? What did he say? I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. 
What impressed Jesus Christ about this fellow was his, was his great faith. Now, the title of my message this evening is Jesus Marveled. That ought to make us marvel. Is that what it said? Verse 9, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at it. Wouldn't that be something to make Jesus marvel? When we're talking about marvel, what does that mean? To strike with awe and admiration, to surprise, astonish, to strike with wonder. In one word, we would say, wow. When you marvel at something, that's the response. Wow. And that is this fellow's wow moment with the Lord Jesus Christ. Only two places in the scripture where we see Jesus Christ marvel, and one of them is here with this Roman centurion. His great faith made the Lord Jesus Christ go, wow. I mean, the Lord was impressed with that. See, when you think of Marvel, you know, they have these, oh, they've been out for decades now, Marvel Comics, you know. And the, the idea of that and the title behind that, the, the point of that is you get the picture of some, you know, 12, 13-year-old boy uh, in bed at night with the flashlight and the comic book under the covers, you know. And here's the Incredible Hulk, and he's coming, wow, you know, that kind of thing. It's that marvel, it's that wonder, it's that awe. It's that surprise uh, when they marvel. The Bible says when those apostles, when the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter 2, and they all begin to speak in tongues, not in some goobly goop that nobody could understand, but in the languages of all those people that could understand and realize they're speaking in our foreign languages, and the Bible says they all marveled. Wow. All the time through Jesus Christ's ministry, when he was healing, uh, when he was raising people from the dead, the Bible says that the people, would marvel. I mean, can you imagine seeing Jesus Christ actually go up to somebody and heal a maimed person and put an arm back on them or take some fellow with a withered hand and, and have him stretch forth that hand and see it come whole as the other or some lame man begin to get up and walk or somebody that couldn't see all of a sudden now can see. The Lord Jesus Christ did a lot of marvelous things. The Lord Jesus Christ can still do a lot of marvelous things for you and I. Amen. Uh, the Lord many times in my life has made me go, wow, man, Lord, wow, look what you did. Glory to God. Amen. But here in this situation, it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself that is going, wow. I mean, do you ever really grasp that? Think about that. Who was Jesus Christ? First Timothy 3.16. He was God manifest in the flesh. You know what God did back there in Genesis chapter 1? He uh, said, uh, I want you to get rid of this uh, darkness and uh, light, and let's uh, take care of that. And we're going to call the light day, and, and the darkness we'll call night. And, uh, and then I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a sun. I'm going to make the earth. I'm going to make the moon. I'm going to make the stars. And God said, wow. No, he didn't. He just says, oh, that's good. <laughs> he made all that, and he said, well, that's good. He didn't go, wow. He didn't marvel at it. Oh, that's good. Huh? I mean, think about it, even when he made us, even when he made all the animals and all the trees and everything that God created, you know what he said? That's good. Huh? Hey, wouldn't it be something if we were to go to the judgment seat of, seat of Jesus Christ and him look at us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Hey, but how about if he'd say, wow. <sighs> huh? That's what he's doing with this, with this centurion here. I mean, he marvels at this guy's great act of faith. And let me say sim simply, first of all, that's all it was, was a simple act of faith. Faith isn't something hard. It's simple. It's easy. Look in verse 9. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Hey, uh, you want to impress the Lord? You know what impresses the Lord? Just a simple act of faith. 
That's what impresses him. You know how people get saved? All you got to do is impress the Lord. <laughs> how does someone get saved? How does someone go from eternal death to eternal life? Simply what? Believe. Right? It's an act of faith. And just a simple act of faith wows the Lord enough to take an old, rotten, dirty sinner and change him into a saint of God and save their eternal soul and give him precious promises from the Word of God and, and let him know all the time that he's with him, he's taking him to heaven one day. I mean, what a change. So what? Just one simple act of faith. Hey, and the, you know what? After you're saved, the only way to please the Lord is by faith. Amen? It's just simple faith. That's all it is. The Bible says, as you've received the Lord, so walk you in him. How do you receive him? By works? No, by faith. And so then how are you going to walk in Jesus Christ? You're going to walk by faith. It's just a simple act of faith. You must be born again. And the only way to be born again is to be born again by believing. Hey, we're born again by faith. We live our Christian lives by faith. We die in faith. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. And I've witnessed to people and talked to people, and I'm sure some of you have too, and given them tracts. And then you, when they finally see uh, the gospel and understand it, I've heard this so many times, it can't be that easy. There's got to be more to it. It can't be that simple. Huh? Yeah, it really is that simple. Faith is not something complicated. Faith is a very simple thing. Uh, all, all we have to do is believe what the Lord said. You ever think about this? You know what happens when someone gets saved? Jesus Christ said there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repenteth. Amen? In the, in the, it didn't say the angels were rejoicing. It said there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Who's in the presence of the angels? It's Jesus Christ, man. He's, he's the one that's getting marveled. He's the one that's being wowed when someone will finally just take that simple step of faith. God is so impressed with that. We looked at that this morning in our Rightly Dividing series that we're doing in Sunday school. And remember, what did Abraham do? He simply believed God, and God was so wowed with that. God so marveled at that that God said, I'm going to give you my righteousness. We have brethren, brothers and sisters, we have this evening the very righteousness of God that he freely gave to us simply because one day we were willing to marvel the Lord and wow him by a simple act of faith and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 11 we know is the great chapter of faith in the Bible. But if you ever really studied out each of those characters, those heroes of the faith, it wasn't some great thing they did. Pretty much it was pretty simple. What did Abel do? Oh God, you want a lamb. Okay. That was it. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. That's it. What did Noah do? He got scared. And did what God said and built an ark to God's specifications. Took him 120 years, but he did it. So what are those? Those are the acts of faith that God's describing through the word of God. Huh? God even mentions Sarah and Abraham. Abraham being strong in faith. <laughs> you know what Abraham and Sarah did? They laughed. But you know what they did? They believed. Brethren, that's all it takes. It's just a simple act of faith. What we would call a childlike faith. And isn't that what Jesus Christ said? Except you come to me as little children. You cannot enter in. The Lord's not looking for some big thing. It's a simple thing. What is it? Just believe me. There's nothing complicated about that. There's nothing deep about that. There's nothing of that that should go over our heads. It's real plain. The Lord puts it right down there. We can get it. Just believe me. So then what's the problem? <laughs> what's the problem? Well, it's right there. It's too easy. It's too simple. The same, listen, the same way that people miss getting saved because they want to try to make it 
more difficult and more... The Christians do the same thing. You know what you'll do on purpose sometimes? Try to muddy the waters, try to complicate it, try to make it bigger than it is. Why? So that you won't just have to obey what God said. Let me see if I can make this more confusing so that I don't have to just do this because that would be too easy. <laughs> Let me see if I can complicate this. No, it doesn't work that way. All you have to do is just do what God said. That's just believe. Just believe the Lord. That's all there is to it. Uh, believe his authority. That's what this fellow did. Look there in verse 8. This is what he said to him. Why, why, why doesn't he want him to come? Why isn't he going to him? For I also am a man set under authority. Hey, I know you can take care of this. I know you can heal my servant. My servant shall be healed. Look at the end of verse 7. Now look at that. He didn't say his servant might be healed, did he? What did he say? My servant shall be healed. And I understand, uh, Lord, because for I also... What's he doing? He's comparing himself to Jesus in this, in this aspect. I also am a man set under authority. Was Jesus... Yeah, he sure was. Whose name did he come in? His father's name. You know who Jesus was claiming to be? The son of God. You know what that centurion is doing right there? He is acknowledging the authority of God the Father over Jesus Christ. He is acknowledging Jesus Christ's sonship. When did Israel ever do that? Huh? When did Israel, uh, you know what they're saying, Beelzebub, or yeah, he's just a prophet, or no. Uh, that centurion knew, you are the one. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are uh, the, the Son of God. He knew who he was. And guess what? When we get to, get to the church and church doctrine, where do we start out? Romans. <laughs> That's this fellow here, see? He's a picture of that. He's a picture of that great act of faith. Uh, not only do we see a simple act of faith, but notice what he did, verse 7. Verse 7, Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. What did that servant need for his faith? Lord, all I need is a word from you. Lord, all I need is, is your word. And if I got that, that's enough for me to believe. That's enough for me to know for sure that my servant's going to be healed if I can just get the word from you. We know the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and that hearing by the word of God. We know that without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so we get in this Bible and, and expect God to give us faith from the book. Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you what, you study the Bible and it will increase your faith. When you get a hold of this book and the way God's put it together and everything, it can't help but increase your faith. In our Bible Institute, that's one of my main emphasis as those students are coming through there, is to help them increase their faith by knowing without a doubt, man, man didn't write this book. This thing right here, this is the Word of God without a doubt. Amen. Uh, but you know what man's nature is? Here, listen up, listen up, hear me out. You know what man, your, your natural tendency is man's nature is this all right show me and i'll believe if i see it i'll believe it you know what god wants you believe and i'll show you see that's contrary to the natural man the natural man in his physical eyes and in his physical environment, he says, all right, God, now listen. You show me, and then I'll believe. And that's how Israel was with God. Why did they need the signs and wonders? See, why did they need when the prophets came, when Jesus came, why did they have to have the sign? Show me, God, and I'll believe. You know what? Even then they didn't believe. You know what God says today to us? You just believe, and I'll show you. Big difference, amen? You know why these charismatics who need the signs and wonders and all that? Listen, why most of them don't have any eternal security and aren't sure from day to day whether they're still saved or not? Because they don't have any faith. 
You're not going to grow in faith by waiting to believe until you see something. God's desire for you and I is to simply believe, and then we'll see. You see, God's desire, when he says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, there's more to that than just hearing the word of God. How is your faith going to grow after you get saved? Just by hearing? You know how your faith's going to grow? When you'll see what God said and act on it. We okay? Okay. And as you begin to act on what God said, then afterward, even if it doesn't make sense, even if to the natural man and to the natural eyes, it doesn't, well, that doesn't seem like that'll work. You see, that's what God means when he says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Be not wise in thine own conceits. What is God saying? No, no, no. It's simple. Just believe me. I know it doesn't make any sense. Who said it was supposed to? Honestly, think about it. What makes sense about believing on a, jed, a dead Jew that died 2,000 years ago on a piece of wood? And that, that be the way to go to heaven. What makes sense about that? See, it's not about, well, I don't think that makes sense. That doesn't seem logical. Not supposed to be. If it was, there wouldn't be any faith necessary. You understand? See, uh, when God uh, sends out Gideon in the army and he says, all right, uh, Gideon, you got a few too many soldiers there. I'm going to win you down. And then I'm going to win you down some more until he gets just those 300. Why would God do that? Wouldn't it have made sense? Wouldn't it have been logical just to go in there with a giant army and win the victory? Yeah, it might have looked like the right thing. That might have seemed like that would have been the right approach, the logical thing to do. But God don't work that way, brethren. There's nothing logical about it. If it was all just logical and plain, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't use logic and you shouldn't use your brain, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to God, sometimes you just got to believe what he said. If God said one thing and you know he said it, then you just obey. You just believe what God said. And as we begin to apply the principles, as we begin to apply and act on the promises Within the word of God, you know what we find? Wow, it worked. I just did what God said, and it, and it really worked. Uh, God, you said that there's no temptation taking me, but such as is common to man, but that you're faithful, and that you won't let me suffer uh, to be tempted above that I'm able. And God, I feel like right now, like... I'm, I'm being tempted above I'm able and I don't know what to do. And God, you said that you'd make a, a way to escape that I may be able to avoid it. And Lord, and then he'll make a way to escape. But see, you've got to act. And when you act upon it and then you see God do it. Now, what happens to your faith? You know what you're beginning to do? You begin to exercise your faith. How's a muscle going to grow? You have to exercise it. You know what God's trying to do with each one of us? Get us to exercise our faith. Listen, Christian, don't get me wrong. Hear me out, all right? You can live right and live a clean life and give your tithe and go through all the motions of being a decent Christian person and never, ever grow in your faith because you never work it out. You never allow it to be tested you just want to go by what you see. And it don't work that way, see? If you're going to grow as a Christian, uh, who is your God? What is he capable of? I'm not asking who you are. I, I know what we're capable of, <laughs> making messes. What, what, can, what can God do? What could God do? He says, these things are written that you might believe. See, he wants us to believe on what? He wrote, we call ourselves Bible believers. See? Israel, the Bible says that Israel limited the Holy One of Israel. Why? He told them about a promised land. And they got scared and didn't want to act on the promise. That was it. That one thing cost Israel 40 years in the desert. That one thing cost that entire generation to lose it. To end up being wanderers in the wilderness instead of pilgrims with a promise. What did any of those Israelites have to look forward to after that event? 
nothing. They're just wandering around. A lot of people saved today, but they're just wandering around. They never have anything to look forward to. Why? God's just, he's working on the next generation. He's working on those, listen, that are going to believe his promise and act upon it. How about us? Think about it. The Bible says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. When's the last time you've claimed that promise and seen God come through last time? You see, it's something to, oh, yeah, that's in the Bible. And that's a good promise from God. When have you ever by faith said to God, God, you said this, and I believe your word, so I want to thank you now for what you're going to do. I mean, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen? You believe that? Have you proved that you believe it? The Bible says that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them are the called according to his purpose. Oh yeah, I believe the promises of God. Hallelujah, do you really? You ever complain when God's working and doing something and you didn't realize that he let something that you didn't like happen for a greater good? You know, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Next verse, for a double-minded man. What's that double-mindedness having to do with? I believe, I don't believe. I believe, well, I'm not sure. I believe, well, maybe. That's double-mindedness. That's the context. You don't get wisdom because you don't really believe God will give it to you. You have not because you ask not. And then when you do ask, you ask amiss that you consume it on your own laws. And true faith just says, all right, God, this is what you told me to do. This is what you want me to do. Let's go. Oh, that doesn't make sense. That's not logical. Okay. You see, you know how you're going to grow in your faith? By exercising it. It's the only way. It's, it's, it has to go beyond just, wow, those are some, that's a neat Bible. Boy, the Bible's got some great stuff. Boy, I really enjoy the lessons, and I do, man. I get a blessing out of it every time I'm in it. That once a month that I get in the Bible, and, no. Um, but listen, every time you're in the Bible, it ought, to, it ought to thrill your soul. You ought to get something from it. But if that's it, you'll only go so far in your faith in your Christian life. Because what you have to do is start taking those things that God promised and put them into effect, man. Start working those things out. The Bible says, work out your own salvation. And that's the idea behind that. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many of you really believe that? Raise your hand. You really believe? Okay. All right. How many of you this week have confessed the same sin twice after you already confessed it and hadn't done it again? Just in case. Say why? Well, I just wanted to make sure. You mean you didn't believe? Come on. Isn't that what it was? How many times did you get saved? I got saved probably about 20 times after I got saved. I just wanted to make sure. You say, what was the problem? It was a lack of faith. That's all. That's all. It's just, I don't know. You know, it, well, you know what God's trying to do? He's trying to build up that faith. He's trying to build up that faith. That's how that thing goes. You know what Jesus Christ said? If I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Do you really believe that? You really believe he's coming back? You really believe he's going to give you a glorified body like his and that you're going to fly in the air through this roof one day? Maybe tonight? Wouldn't that be something? Then will our faith become sight. Until then, are you acting on it? Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Then what's the problem? Do you really believe that? Now, we know context and everything else. If you ask amiss, we understand. But if you're asking for something and you know it's the will of God, then what's the problem? Just believe. He said that's what you're supposed to do. Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. 
And how many times in your Christian life since you've been saved have you really thought he did? So what's the problem? We're just not believing. No faith. You want to wow the Lord? You want to cause the Lord to marvel? You want to impress him? You know what impresses the Lord? Our faith. That's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, with God, all things are possible. That's Bible. Did you know that? How many of you really believe that? Well, I just don't see how God... Well, come on. Unless it's sin. <laughs> hey, with God, all things are possible. Let me ask you a question. 2 Peter 1.4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these, hey, have you started acting on those promises? That by these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. You'll start becoming like God. You'll start becoming like Jesus Christ. The only way for that to happen, brethren, is when you apply those promises in your life. And as you do, and time after time after time, you see God coming through and God coming through. And sometimes, well, I don't know, maybe this time God, and then he comes through. And you keep seeing the Lord coming through at time after time after time. You know what's happening? That faith continues to get stronger. That's God's desire for each of us. He doesn't want us to be faith weaklings. He doesn't want any 99-pound weaklings in his army. He wants us to have strong faith. That's his desire. And notice, if you will, here, look in verse 10. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. Let me say this, my last point. He had an effectual faith. Say, what do you mean? He got the result. He believed it. He trusted in what God said. And he saw the result. He saw what God was able to do. You know what? Listen, brethren, think about it. I can guarantee you something right now. If you're willing to wow the Lord, be prepared for the Lord to wow you. Do you hear me? A lot of people never see the Lord wow them a whole bunch. A lot of Christians never get marveled at a lot that God ever does in their life. You know why? Because they never wow the Lord. They never take that step of faith where they can actually see God do a miracle in their lives. And that's what it's going to take sometimes. Brethren, faith is not believing that God can. Faith is believing that God will. There was a drought they were having up in northern Georgia a few years back, and they had like a little ecumenical thing and had a bunch of churches to get together and a bunch of Christians of all flavors, and they're all gathering together and supposed to just have a little singing thing and prayer. And they're asking God, please, if you would, Lord, please send us rain. And they're singing, you know, kumbaya or whatever. And, and uh, you know, having all these different ministers coming up and giving a prayer and saying a word or whatever. And finally, this old Baptist black preacher comes on up and he's, he walks on up like this, a little old in age now. He's been around for a while, you can tell. And he just comes up to that pulpit and takes his glasses and looks around like this. He takes his glasses off folds them up, puts them in his pocket. And he says, brothers and sisters, we have gathered here today because we's coming to ask the Lord to give us some rain. And I got one question for all you folks. Where is your umbrellas? <clears throat> Amen. Oh, we're going to pray. Where's your umbrella? See, what's the idea? I'm expecting. I know. I'm certain. I have assurance that God is always going to keep his word and that the Lord's going to come through. He ain't failed me yet. He's not going to fail me now. And if you'd be willing to wow the Lord, be surprised and be ready for the Lord 
to wow you. Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief, is our prayer many times. Amen? But the idea is you need to grow. You want the Lord to help your unbelief? How's he going to help your unbelief? By you taking. Listen, at first, how does a baby start walking? See? At first, it's just those little steps. But after a while, those steps should get a little bigger. Get a little wider. Say, all right, Lord, I'm trusting you. How did Peter walk on that water to get to Jesus? <laughs> well, Jesus just said, come on. That's how. What did Peter do to start sinking? He started looking at the circumstances. Instead of remembering what the Lord had said. Lesson on faith right there. Amen. John Wesley, one time, he had finished a sermon and he was walking down an old country road and one of the parishioners from the church there came up to him and he says, Brother Wesley, I, I don't know how you do it, but I, I've really, I've just been having some problems right now and I don't know if I can go any further with the Lord. I mean, I'm just up to here with it and I don't know if I can go anymore. And John Wesley said, well, you see that cow looking over that stone wall? Just right on the spot. You see that cow looking over the stone wall? He says, yeah, I see that cow looking over the stone wall. He says, you know why that cow is looking over that stone wall? He said, no, not really. He says, because he can't look through it. You know what we do sometimes? We're looking at the stone wall. Instead of looking over it. Amen. Amen. Oh, look, there's just no way. Uh -uh. Look over it. Look over it. Dr. A.C. Dixon with his uh, deacons, they needed $2,600 to get out of debt. And one of the deacons stood up and says, I believe God. We're going to have prayer tonight. And next Sunday, we're going to take up an offer and we're going to be taken care of. Next Sunday night came around and they had a bad storm. About half the church wasn't there. And the pastor was on the brink of just saying, uh, no, not even any sense taking up an offering. But he decided, all right, go ahead. He took it up. Guess how much they got? $2,600. Exactly what they needed. Just believing. Just believing what God said. You know what James says? Hey, show me your faith. You show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Can anybody see your faith? Huh? Is it evident to others? What was that, Janice, the, the, the word this morning in Sunday school? Conversation? What, what's our conversation? What's our conversation as Christians? What does that mean? Our conversation. Huh? The way we live is our what? Conversation. What did, when we think of the word conversation, what do we think of? What we're saying. You know what we're saying, Christians? What we're living. The Bible says we're living epistles known and read of all men. How many people believe more and their faith is strengthened because of you? When they see you just steady as she goes and just believe in God. Trust in what the Lord said. When they see you never worrying or getting too upset or too frustrated. Because they just know that you just believe God. It's just that simple childlike faith. It's not complicated. We want to complicate it. It's just, well, that's what God said. See? What was the old bumper sticker? Uh, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Well, listen, it goes better than that. God said it. That settles it. Whether you believe it or not, that settles it. Now you ought to believe it. Why? Because God said it. And that settles it. Amen? Our conversation. If you truly believe, others ought to know it. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That's Bible. You really believe that? I thought one of the neatest stories in the Bible, uh, illustration on this thing is when Peter's in jail there in the book of Acts. And James has already been killed, and they knew Peter's next, and they're praying. they got a prayer meeting going on. 
And there are all the Christians are together and they're praying, Oh God, please deliver Peter. Please, Lord, get Peter out of jail. And the angel comes by and opens the gates of the prison and just brings Peter right on out. Peter goes on up to the house where they're having the prayer meeting at, knocks on the gate for the door, and a lady comes out and says, Oh, who are you? It must be your ghost. And goes back in and tells everybody, I think I just saw the, the, the spirit of Peter out there. Well, why didn't she think it was Peter? Oh, Peter, it can't be you. You're in jail. We're praying for you to get it. Isn't that how we are sometimes? See? Good illustration there of a lack of faith. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. That's what it is. Bible says we're living epistles known and read of all men. I'm not into this lifestyle evangelism. I think you need to tell people how to get saved and they'll get saved. But has anybody ever decided to be a Christian? Because of the way you lived? This soldier believed. He believed. And his servant was healed. A fellow came to a ferry boat rider. He would just take over people and horses, just a small thing. And he'd sit back in that thing with a chair, and he had two oars. And this fellow got on there with his horse, and he said, yeah, I just want to go across the river here. And he paid the fee, got on there. And he noticed as that fellow left that rope off at the pier and started on over the river, he looked up at those two big, long oars. And written on one of those oars was this word, faith. And as he brought the other war out of the water, he looked at it and it said, works. And, and so the fellow asked, he says, why do you have faith and works written on those oars? He says, well, I'll show you by, I'll show you why, come here. And he takes the one oar works. And he lays it down and he starts rowing. And what happens, of course, it just goes in a big circle. And he says, now let me show you this. He takes that oar out and puts the works oar in and starts to go. And what happens again? He's just going in circles. And he, and he explains to him, I believe. And so I must do the works that the Lord has called me to do. And when the two work together, I get where I need to be. Amen. That's a good illustration. Now, brethren, there's no doubt about it. When I preach a message like this, do you know why God has me preach a message like this? Because there's some, going to be something come by your way this week. There's going to be a test. There's going to be a trial of your faith. <gasps> what students are they that get all nervous when they hear there's a test? The ones that know that they're not prepared, they're not ready. Man, if you're, if you're studied up, if you're revved up, you're, you look forward to it. And that Bible says you're to count it all joy. Doesn't it? I'm trying to tell you right now, be ready. Because something this week is going to be there to try that faith. Maybe a small test, maybe a big test, something in the middle. Something's going to come by your way this week to test your faith. At least it ought to. The question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to act on it? Are you really going to believe God and trust his word? You're going to take him at his promise. Take him for what he said. Are you going to pass the test? Because every time we do, what happens? And every time the tests get a little bigger, get a little harder, but that's the whole point, isn't it? That's how you're going to continue to grow. Because God wants to continue to strengthen our faith so that others, through our great faith, will see him, will know him. Now, brethren, when I started this message in the introduction, I told you there was only two times during the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ when he marveled. And one of them has to do with this Roman centurion. And he marveled. At his great faith. You know the other time Jesus marveled? Look in Mark chapter 6. Let me show you. Mark chapter 6, real quick. Mark chapter 6. Verse 
verse 4, But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, his own house. Verse 5, Mark 6, 5. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Isn't that something? The only two times Jesus Christ marveled in his ministry. One time, when that Roman soldier, through one simple act of faith, Caused the Lord Jesus Christ to marvel. What else caused him to marvel? The opposite. Unbelief. What's the Lord looking for? What's the Lord looking for from you? We, brethren, have been given an opportunity to wow the Lord. Question is, how are we going to do it? Wow. Through our unbelief? Or through a great act of faith. Lord, just give me your word. And I'll believe it. That Roman uh, soldier, brethren, in that passage, did you look at it? When did he ever see Jesus? He never did. Never laid eyes on him. Did you notice that? Have you? Hey, great, Thomas. You've seen and you believe. Blessed are those who see not and yet believe. The world says, seeing is believing. God and his word says, Believing is seeing. We don't see to believe. We believe to see. The Bible talks about a shield, soldier. What's that shield called? Shield of faith. Why? Those fiery darts. What are they? Doubt. Fear, worry, anxiousness, those fiery darts of the wicked, they're going to come. You know what the Lord says? I ain't got to worry about any of that. I don't have to be concerned. Let the arrows fly. doesn't matter. Just a simple shield. That's all I need. It's a shield of faith. That thing's a force field, man. How's your faith? Has it grown any yet? It's only going to grow when we allow the tests to come and each time we act upon it and see God come through. Another step. Another step in our walk of faith with the Lord. Let's wow the Lord and then watch him wow us. Let's stand for prayer. Altars open. If you'd like to come, you're welcome to come. Let's spend a little bit in prayer, Father. We thank you for the message and I pray you'd bear witness to the truth. And, uh, Lord, it's always... As Brother Coat said when I talked to him on the phone this week, it's always easier to talk about faith and preach about living by faith, sing about it. It's always easier than doing it and really acting on it. Help us this week, Lord, no matter the circumstances. God, just to believe our God and trust in Him. And I pray as each person here, Lord, faces that test of their faith this week. I pray they just like a child, just simply believe what you said and watch you, Lord, come through. Thank you, Lord, for every time you've done it in my life. Thank you every time you've done it in the lives of others that are here. And Lord, I'm glad you're never fresh out. 
And uh, Lord, we want to impress you. We want to please you. And we know that without faith, it's impossible to do that. So help us, Lord, this week to grow a little in our faith as we score well on the tests of our faith that are given to us this week. Let's so allow the Lord the minister. Some have come. If you need to come, you're welcome to come. The altar's still open. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Sister Tammy, would you just come ahead and play for us on the piano, whatever the Lord puts on your heart? Brethren, listen, next time you see yourself starting to fret, starting to worry, that Bible says, be careful for nothing. Say, what does that mean? Full care, worry. What are you to worry about? Nothing about except doing right. <laughs> be careful to maintain good works. <laughs> That's what you ought to be careful about. All the rest of it, you don't have to worry about a thing. You know what you do? Just believe. Just trust God. Watch him. He's going to wow you. If you're willing to wow him. Amen. If you'll take that step of faith. He's going to start out just baby steps. Say, Lord, whatever little step I got to take, I'm willing to take it. I'm just going to do what you said to do. Just a little simple step of obedience. That's where it's going to start. Lord, I'm just going to do what you said. I don't like it. But I'm going to do it. And then watch, watch God move. And, and then you know what you do? Oh, I'll take another. <laughs> I'll take another. And then you can start taking them a little bigger. And next thing you know, you'd be climbing ladders. How high could that faith? Hey, what could God do with you? What could God do in this church? If we just believe him. I wonder how much we've hindered him. Just because we really haven't believed what he's capable of. You know, we do. We look at what we're capable of. Guilty right here. Amen. Guilty. I look at what I'm capable of and I say, there ain't no way. But I can't look at that. I just have to look at what God said, believe what he's able to do and say, all right, Lord, if that's what you're going to do. If that's what you want to do, you're able. No problem for you. You're God. Nothing is impossible with God. Thank God, man. Isn't that good to know? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Does God love you? Is he a good father? Dads, moms, how many times when they're just little, do you kind of hold them, try to walk with them a little bit, and then make them, uh, maybe just let them try on their own just a step or two? And then what happens when they start to fall? You let them fall and laugh at them, right? Well, of course not. You love them. Amen? Does the Lord love you? He ain't going to let you fall. He'll, he'll protect you. What are you worried about? Now, I'm not talking about tempting God. Don't get off on that. See? Oh, yeah, I'm going to jump off the bridge. God's going to save. No. See? God might just say, well, you're an idiot. Welcome home. You know. But what I'm talking about is if you got something and God's given you his word and you know what God wants you to do and you know what he's promised and you've prayed and you've asked God and you believe him. Where's your umbrella? Have, have you thanked him yet? For what he's going to do? Amen. We've got a father that loves us, cares about us. He's, he's just putting us to these little tests because he wants to see us grow. He wants to see us get stronger. He wants to see us walk and live. A life of faith. Enoch walked with God. Wouldn't it be good to be walking with God by faith and God do like he did with Enoch and rapture? Well, I sure would hate for that trumpet to blow. And I'm sitting back doubting God and letting all the fiery darts of the wicked come my way. Worrying and fretting. 
get up to heaven and find out what God would have done. Or what God was going to do. I'd rather go down believing. If I'm going to go down, I'd rather go down trusting than doubting. Amen? All right, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Let's see. Um, Brother Kenny, would you close us in prayer, please?